Hey guys, Allie from Little Hill Homestead. Today I wanted to show you guys how to make, okay, you guys know that when I do my sourdough bread, I use Pyrex bowls instead of, um, oh my gosh, what are they called? The wicker, not the wicker, the bamboo baskets that a lot of people use. I use Pyrex bowls. They're something that I have. You can get them fairly reasonably priced and they're the perfect size. So this is a Pyrex, is it a 403? 403. And I'm gonna show you how to make an insert so that when you make your sourdough, it doesn't stick to your bowl. Isn't that cute? And the best part, it's reversible. So you can use it for this or you can use it as a bowl cover as well. So like when I'm doing my proofing, let me grab you the bowl. When I'm doing my ooh, sourdough proofing, I'm sorry, I didn't plan to do this. So when I do my, um, my sourdough in here and I'm letting it do the stretch and folds and doing its thing. It also fits over the top of that one perfectly. Multi-use, I'm so excited you guys. Anyways, if you guys want me to show you how to make a sourdough bowl proofing insert, we'll call it that. Keep on watching. All right, so to make our um, sourdough proofing basket liner, whatever you want to call it. You need two pieces of um, 18 in or an 18 inch square of fabric. I buy fat quarters because you can get them pretty reasonable. A lot of times Joanne's has them for like 99 cents. So this will be $2 worth of fabric. Um, the easiest way I have found to cut a circle for this is like I said, this is an 18 by 24 because that's what a fat quarter comes in, but I'm gonna show you how to do an 18 inch circle. So I'm just gonna fold my fabric in half and meet those two together and kind of smooth it out. I'm gonna fold this edge over to this edge, but you don't wanna get that like raw stuff in your final product. So I fold it just short of that so that it's not included. So we're gonna work with the corner where they all kind of met. I'm gonna pull it down to this corner down here. Now I just have one of these little measuring tapes. Um, they're really reasonable. You can get them at Hobby Lobby or Michaels or wherever you've got. And for this one, we need 18 inches around for it to fit perfectly and it for it to sink in our bowl. So I'm gonna take my zero and put it on my corner. And I'm gonna go out nine inches. And I'm gonna make a little mark with a pencil. And I'm gonna keep this finger down and I'm gonna slide this one around. And we're doing nine inches because once this is unfolded, it will be doubled. So if you have an 18 inch square piece of fabric, this is pretty much gonna get you to that edge on all sides. I started with a little bit bigger, so I'm gonna have a little leftover over here, but. And I'll just keep marking all the way. Then you're just gonna kind of connect the dots loosely so that you can kind of see where you're gonna aim for cutting. Pencil will wash off. You can buy a fabric marker if you prefer. This washes off before we use it anyways. I usually wash these once I've, I've finished with them. And then, uh, okay, so you can kind of see we have a half circle or a quarter of a circle um, drawn on here. I'm gonna take some scissors and I'm just gonna cut where our pencil lines are, just outside of them. So we just have a little more wiggle room is better. So this is now scrap, and once you unfold this, you have an 18 inch circle. Bam! Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing with my other piece, get it cut out, and I'll be right back. Okay guys, I have my two circles cut out. I'm gonna put one facing, so the pattern faces up, and then I'm gonna take my second one and I'm gonna do the pattern facing down. So it's inside out, basically, is what we're gonna do. I'm gonna line those up. If you are more comfortable pinning, Go ahead and pin around your edge. I don't feel the need to do that, but it's completely up to you. The other thing we need is an 18 inch piece of elastic. This is what is gonna go into your little channel that you're gonna make to make it um, stay put. So we're gonna take these two items and we're gonna go over to my sewing machine. Okay, I'm at my sewing machine now with you guys and we're gonna do our first um, stitch. So on my sewing machine, I already have all my tensions and everything correct. I have plenty of thread 
And our first thing that we're gonna do is, if you're new to sewing, I'm gonna try to do it as broken down as possible. You just need a sewing machine, you'll be set. Uh, my sewing machine, because it is not from the US, doesn't have a half inch mark. A lot of people like to do a half inch, um, what is the word, seam? Um, but I just kind of eyeball it. So I'm gonna drop my foot. I'm gonna go there. And you're gonna sew a circle around both pieces, but you need to leave a gap to be able to flip it inside out so that your fabric is then gonna be the correct way. So we're gonna do a couple stitches forward. And then you're gonna push your um, reverse button. Let me show you real quick. My reverse button is here. Some of them it's um, obviously in a different spot just based on the brand that you have. But you're gonna push your reverse button and go back like two stitches. And that's just gonna hold it so that when you flip it, it doesn't pull those stitches. All right, so we're gonna go around in a circle. You basically just wanna make sure that you're catching both of your fabrics as you go around that circle. And then work at whatever pace you're comfy at. sometimes stop and readjust just to make sure my fabric over here is ready for me to feed it through and I go again You just want to make sure your fabric is staying lined up in the same spot on the other side so that it's a consistent um, seam. Okay, we're just about there. No, we're not. We're only halfway. <laughs> <laughs> so my original stitch is here I'm going to leave about two inches for us to flip it you reverse it and push it forward again and again that kind of keeps that from spreading out when we do our next step and then we're just going to trim our threads now that leaves a pocket right here you're going to use these fingers to push the fabric through that little hole until you have oh, I'm going to tip my iron so that it starts warming up while I'm doing this part because our next step is going to be ironing Alright, so you're going to pull your fabric through that little hole, and then your bowl cover will be the correct direction. If you leave too small of a hole, it makes this pretty difficult, so that's why I like to leave a couple inches. So now I have a big blob. Just keep pulling, it'll eventually pull itself out. The other thing I like to do, give it a shake, is I use my finger inside of it to push those where the two are sewn together, I push my finger kind of in a circle around here and it pushes any fabric that might be tucked inside that you can't see out to the edge. Okay, once I get this part done, I'm gonna go ahead and iron it flat. So I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. I've ironed it together nice and flat. When I iron it, I tuck down where, where we left that hole, I tuck the fabric down just a tiny bit and iron it under so that it will um, not have a raw edge when we sew this thing shut. So we want to find where that hole was. And we're going to sew a one inch from the edge. So you're from here to here, you're going to go one inch in. And we're going to sew one circle all the way around. This is what's going to create that channel for your elastic to sit in. So again, you're going to go forward like two stitches then back to birds two, and this one's going to go all the way around a circle. I have a one inch marker back here. I'm just going to keep my fabric on that one inch marker all the way around in a circle. This prevents that elastic from slipping around in there and um, gives it a nice little place to tuck. once in a while and readjust your fabric. All right, we're almost 
almost there. Now my stitch is right here. You want to make sure that when you're getting close to it that you're lined up so you don't have like crisscrossing going on. You want it to look like a clean circle. So when you get there, go one stitch over where you started, back it up twice, forward again. Lift your needle up. Oh, I ran out of bobbin thread, you guys. Come on, really? I ran out of bobbin thread halfway through. So I'm gonna fill my bobbin and come back. <laughs> my new machine, it, the bobbin is hidden down here and so I can't see it. Where my old one, I used to be able to see it. Awesome, <laughs> be right back. All right, we're back in action. I'm gonna find where it stopped. I'm gonna go back a little bit before that and start sewing again. My bad, 100% on that one. So I'm gonna go forward. If this happens to you, go back a couple. Let's start your stitch over. And then we'll just continue our circle. What a waste of time, right? <laughs> I really did like half the thing without realizing that it wasn't so good. All right, again, we're back at our start. Just line them up so that it looks clean. Forward, backward a couple times, and then, whoop, that was a weird noise. Threads up. Yeah, we're good. What did I do? Oh, I just, <laughs> my new sewing machine, if you push your foot backwards on it like this, it cuts the thread, which is what I just did. which is kind of a pain. Um, it seemed like a nice feature to have, but now that I have it, it's a big pain in the butt. Like, it's not long enough is the problem. I need some tweezers to pull it out of here. Anyways, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pause this, fix this, come back. Okay, let's try this one more time. <laughs> My sewing machine is fixed again. So you wanna find the hole um, that we had, and then you have your piece of elastic. I'm gonna take a safety pin push it in the end of our elastic. This is gonna help us guide it through that channel. So you're gonna pop it in one way, and then I basically just push it along, and then I grab the end of the um, safety pin and pull. And then I'll thread it through whatever you bunched it in. And you just go all the way around in your circle. get to the end and I'm gonna pause you guys and bring you back once I get to that point all right guys I got my safety pin to the end one thing I forgot to tell you is that so you don't lose the start or the end of your elastic as you're pulling it through I put a little closer clip on it you can also use a safety pin that just makes it so that when you're pulling this one through it doesn't thread back if that makes any sense so now you have your two ends take your little safety pin off and now we're gonna take our two pieces and we're gonna sew across them to secure them together. So I just line them up under my foot and I go forward and backward a few times. Those up and trim your thread. Okay, now if you pull this part, it'll pull that elastic into your channel. And then uh, I kind of just go around the whole thing to make sure it's all good and in there. So I'm back at my hole and we're gonna sew that shut. So, so, <laughs> I'm gonna put it underneath the foot of our sewing machine. I have threads everywhere. And what I do is I like to line it up just, whoop, my hand is in the way, with the back side. So you're not going too far in and, and hooking that elastic, but it's just far enough in to close that um, shut. Mm -hmm. And we're just gonna go forward a couple, backwards a couple, and then um, you can either just sew that shut and be done, or I like to go around the whole circle. It just finishes off that edge really nicely. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. You wanna get as close to the edge as you can without going off of it, basically. too when I ironed I left my fabric just a tiny bit damp and it makes it easier to grab onto for this part when it's just a touch damp All right, we're getting there y'all I got what 
whatever speed you feel comfortable with. I think I've been sewing since I was like, well, my mom taught me when I was really young, um, some basic quilt stuff, but I've been sewing forever. So we're back to where we started, overlap it, go back to, forward to, and that'll secure the stitch. And then uh, lift your needle up, pull it out and clip your threads. I'm just gonna trim up my threads and then I'm gonna show you the final product on our bowl. Be right back. Okay, here's our finished product. I have our bowl here. And let me just, whoop. Show you what we got here. So you can pull it tight and it will be a bowl cover. Or to do sourdough, you just push it in. It's still a little tucked. And like I said, these are reversible, they're washable. So your sourdough. Sorry, my alarm went off on my phone for some reason, telling me to make lunch. Um, obviously it's not on here 100% straight, but flour dust that, put your sourdough in there, and then you can cover it with either their second one so that your bread is in there. So you have the dual layer, or like I do two sourdoughs at a time, and I have um, just a bunch of these 403s. Anytime I see them in an antique store or anywhere, I, I buy them. Um, only if they're reasonably priced. People overprice stuff now because they think it's cool. But um, there you go. There's our little sourdough liners for our 403 Pyrex. Stretched out on our beautiful big old, I got this thing for Christmas for my husband. It's just an antique yellow wear bowl, but isn't she pretty? So this is what I do my sourdough in. Now it does two bowl, two, um, loaves at the same time. So I use it as a topper for here, and then when I'm done with my sourdough, flour line it, and put it on a 403. But it also will fit on just about any bowl in your kitchen. It's just a bowl cover um, if you're not using it for this purpose. But wash them. Um, I sometimes like to do them with light colored fabrics so that if I ever have, um, and these get really dirty um, from doing sourdough in them. So if you do light colored fabrics, you can throw a little bleach on them and bleach them out or um, a little like OxyClean or whatever you feel comfortable using. So. Anyways, there's our final cover. Appreciate you guys watching.